today with South Central baseball coach Kurt Jones. I went to Kinmaniyama High School and that was before South Central. Um, South Central is uh, made up of Farina La Grove, which is up in Farina and St. Peter area, and Kinmundi and Alma, when we consolidated, we became South Central. So I went to Kinmundi-Alma High School, uh, graduated in 1976, and I played, well, we only had baseball and basketball, so that's what I played, and we played it year-round. Initially, I was supposed to go to Greenville College and play basketball, and uh, coach there had recruited me, and then during the summer months, he left and took another job, and I played some Legion baseball down at Salem, played for a guy by the name of Harry Easley, and he is the guy that turned me on to baseball. He had the connection uh, for me to go on and play college baseball. I ended up at Lincoln College, played there for two years, and from there I transferred to Northwest Missouri and played two years there. You know, in, in high school, at the time when I went through, basketball was the biggest sport. That's what we spent the most time uh, playing and practicing all the time. We had a really good team. We had a lot of tall players on the team and had a lot of success. So that was kind of the focus then. We played baseball and had a lot of good athletes. Um, like I've told a lot of people, if I had four years of my life to live over again, it would probably be my four college years because of the experiences that I had there and the baseball success that we had. And, and I don't know, that was just a lot of fun. Well, at the time I was the junior high coach and I did that for several years. Um, Gary Shirley was a high school coach and he was started when South Central became South Central in 1990. Uh, it was kind of a strange circumstance without going into all the details. They had already started their spring practice and this was in 1997. Um, I came to school one morning. Um, the principal pulled me into the office and said because of some things that had happened, I was now the head coach of the high school team. So it just kind of came at me out of nowhere. Uh, went out to practice that day and it was kind of odd because they'd already started practice. Um, and it was, I wouldn't say it was a struggle, but it was a kind of a weird experience to go through it in that way. But we had a really good team that year with uh, Sean Garrett was the main player on that team. So, and I had coached him from Little League all the way up through. So it wasn't like they were new kids. And I had a lot in class, but it was just an odd experience to start, you know, in that way. Well, the spring of 97 is when I started, so I'm usually pretty good at math, but I'm thinking that's been 24 years. I've been asked that a lot. It's not something I keep track of, but I believe it's been 24 or 25 without doing the math. And three or four would obviously be very easy. Uh, three of them played professionally. Sean Garrett uh, graduated in 97, the very first year that I coached, and I coached him a lot in junior high, Little League and all that, played in the minor leagues for 12 or 13 years. Um, Spencer Patton, who's obviously a really good one, still pitching for the Rangers out of the bullpen. Uh, Tanner Bush, who graduated in 09, he was a second round pick out of high school and signed. Pitched for about five years, I think, before some injuries got to him. Um, I use a kid by the name of Fisher Tharp all the time when I and you're always looking for a leader on the team. He was a natural leader. His group uh, was a big senior class, not super talented. In fact, we were under 500 in the spring and played in the sectional championship. And he was a really special kind of a leader or a person. And he led that group. I just called them a band of brothers. They won games that really their talent level probably was not there to win some of the games and put them in positions that they did. And he just had a ton to do with that as far as being a leader, leading that group. And they, they were, like I said, they were just a band of brothers. Well, obviously this year's team that won the state tournament would be a pretty notable team. I think the team with uh, Fisher Tharp that I mentioned earlier in 13 and what they accomplished uh, was stands out in my mind. There's been a, a lot of teams, good teams that we've had. Teams in the early 2000s and mid 2000s were really, really good teams back when we had two classes. Um, it was a lot tougher to advance then and they had a lot of success but we just didn't get over the hump like we did this year. What brings you so much joy as a coach? Well, there's several things I think that, that do. One very odd one I think that 
<laughs> might not be, and some coaches might not say, is I enjoy going out the ball field, working on the field, making it as nice as it can be, uh, having it ready for practice, um, things like that. You know, I, I enjoy doing that. Nobody else is going to do it, so I better enjoy it. But I just like being around the kids. I've retired from teaching now, so I don't see them on a daily basis, and I still enjoy being around the kids. Um, obviously, watching them develop. I think probably one of the biggest joys I get is taking average kids or below average kids and, and trying to lift them up so that they can help the good players on the team. And that's what it takes for success, I think, as your team is you got to have some good players, but the marginal ones are, are less than that. You know, in a small school, you get what you get, and, and you got to try to make that bottom of the order or the certain particular players on your team feel like they fit in and, and have some success to make the whole team better. Well, I've said for a long time to a lot of people and every single one of my teams, I think the hardest thing for me personally to coach is, is a team chemistry type thing. Um, you can have all the talent in the world, but if that group of players don't get along, if they don't pull for each other, those types of things, that's a huge obstacle and it's something that you, know, you have to try to find a way and they have to help. They have to try to find a way to make themselves a good group, a good team, good teammates, pull for each other. Even if they're not friends and even if they don't hang around with each other, you know, out of school or away from the team, you kind of got one common goal there when you show up at the ball field and that's, we got to try to be the best we can. And that was an obstacle that I had, I felt like with this year's team. Well, I mean, it's, it's tough to tell kids that they're not going to get to play. And we, and it was really kind of up in the air a little bit at first. We started practice and practice for about a week. Uh, found out we had to shut down, school shut down. Um, but it was not totally official that it was, you know, nobody knew anything about COVID. So it's just like, well, we might still get to play, we might not. And then when it was finally over, I just felt so horrible for the seniors because what a great group of kids those kids were. And a lot of coaches can say that. Um, but I had four of them, you know, and for a kid to miss his entire senior year, that probably bothered me more. I mean, on a personal level, it was, I don't know. I thought, well, you know, I'll get to coach again. But those guys don't get to play again. And for all of them, that was that was going to be their last experience to get to play. And, and they didn't get a chance to play beyond high school. So it was really tough to watch that and see them kids lose that. I mean, the success that we had in winning the, the whole thing was pretty amazing. But we could have just as easily lost our very first game against Red Hill and and uh, postseason play is so emotional and generally the team that gets the lead first you know puts the pressure on the other team and there's tons of pressure in, in the playoffs and they jumped out to a four to nothing lead and it wasn't until the sixth inning their third baseman had a had a big error and we scored two runs to tie it it, it looked like we could have went down in, in game one and somehow managed to survive so you got to have a lot of breaks and some luck along the way, and I think we got a pretty good break with that error. Well, we've lost so many sectionals over the years and been in that game and lost some really close games, and we lost it three years in a row you know, at one point. Um, so, that, you know, you're always wanting to get that extra step, get that opportunity to go on. But in that particular game, we had to have a big game out of chase. And when we play North Clay, they know our guys and we know theirs, and it's just like a – I think it's kind of a rivalry. We're in the same conference, so every time we play them, it's, it's a heated battle. They're always close games. And, you know, and Chase came out and pitched like he's capable of, and we had to have that. Their guy pitched equally as well. I mean, it was basically a pitching duel, and the run we scored was just me gambling like crazy, and somehow that paid off and held up. I know I told my assistant, I said, we're not winning this game one to nothing, and we ended up we did. Um, but... You know, our theme's pitching and defense, and that day, it was pitching and defense. Base hit. Good.
getting that early lead and getting up nine to nothing. And, and we have pitch counts. We have to follow Aiden Dotson and pitched, and he was just mowing through their order, and, and we were scoring runs. And, you know, I'm thinking, shoot, we may win 10 run rule. Um, so he's right at 60 pitches. So if I pull him then and save him for Thursday because it looks like we're going to win, and that was my thought process, we're going to save him. Um, for Thursday, I pulled him out, and then the guys that came in to pitch struggled, throwing strikes, walking people, hitting people. They had some huge hits. Slowly, here they come, here they come. Um, here we are behind 14 to 12 in the bottom of the seventh, which was absolutely ridiculous. I had, who, who could have guessed? So you have to give them some credit along with our guys walking and hitting people because they had some big, big hits with bases loaded. And it was just hard to believe that that had actually happened. Um, but we put a little rally together, and then Bo Jolliffe had one of the biggest hits of the season. Him being a big lefty pull hitter, he pulled a home run over, you know, in the inning before, and for him to lace one down the left field line, a foot fair, that's not the kind of hitter he is. But for him to do that, um, which was just huge. It's like, what a sigh of relief. I, I felt really good when that happened. I thought, hey, you know, here we go. Game has changed. We're going to pull this off. Um, but we had to go two more innings. And to, to get a walk-off, bases loaded walk, generally is not very dramatic. But in that situation, it was dramatic. <laughs> teams that you really don't know a whole lot about. You can make a lot of phone calls, you can talk to people, but it's not like you're playing local teams that you've played a few times. So it, it's a little bit different. I just knew that we had Chase uh, available for maximum pitches. And just from what I'd heard about them, I thought we had a really good chance um, the way Chase throws. And it worked out. We got that big lead. And again, I take him out. Uh, with the same way the super sectional game went, hoping that we didn't relive that again. And, you know, he had 21 pitches left, which the following game, that worked out real well. Aiden uh, was, he couldn't pitch that day because we had to use him in a super sectional game. Um, Chase only had 21 pitches left from the semifinal game, and, and uh, Spencer has pitched so well for us since he's, since he's came here. We knew what he was capable of. Um, he, he was 6-0 and in our fall season, and he pitched really, really well up to a certain point. Struggled a little bit there towards the end of the season. Um, so we were certainly hoping that we would get Spencer that we know can pitch like he did in that game. And um, after that first inning, he struck out the first three guys. And everybody come running off the field like, yes, here's our old Spencer, we, the one that we know and love. And it was like game off. Chase is going to be able to get two outs and 21 pitches. But that didn't happen. So I thought, well, here we go. We top the lineup. We just got to go. Go for it. And, you know, he came in. Um, their leadoff guy hits into the double play. I mean, what a huge, huge play that was. And, and his brother Aiden just was up the middle. It wasn't super hard hit, but he just made it look easy. And it was like, oh, that's perfect. They scored a run. Make it four to two. He walks the next kid. Now the tying runs on third, and their big lefties up. I think, gosh, something in the gap, and we're tied. So, you know, 
He hits a not a routine ball up the middle. I mean, he hit it sharply, but Chase Thompson, super fast, great glove, and backhands it and just does a flip, and he runs off the field, and, you know, they're all screaming and yelling. And usually what I say, one of our sayings is, good thing we practiced that. And that's, I mean, that's, I've said that for years. And so when they make plays that we practice, that's what we always say, good thing we practiced that. So I told him that. I said, hey, good thing we practice that backhand every day, huh? You made that look easy. And he did, and he just calmly flipped it. had 21 pitches left, uh, but the way Spencer had pitched, I thought, shoot, we're not going to need him. Um, he ended up with 99 pitches, which has been a, it had been a while since he had gone that deep in a game. We'd been using him in relief a lot. Uh, I think he just kind of got tired. I don't think it was nerves. I don't think it was anything like that. We had a four to one lead, but he walked the first couple guys and number nine guy dinks one up the middle and here we are, bases loaded, nobody out. Gosh, here we go. Um, and I told my assistant, I said, he just needs to get one out. Because I thought, you know, with 21 pitches, um, I think it would be big for any senior class for this particular one. Their challenge goes all the way back to the beginning of the fall. You know, we didn't get to play in the spring and they come in as seniors. And I just felt like a huge, huge thing for this particular group was we got to pull together as a group, as a team. Um, the team chemistry thing that I talked about before and that was their challenge, and they heard it over and over and over, all through the fall, all through the spring. And I said, you know, there's a few things that will prevent this team from advancing, and that was one of them. There were a few other things, but that was, to me, was the number one. And as the fall went along, as the spring went along, those guys bought into it. We started winning, you know, and, and things were going really, really well, and I think they just felt like, you know what, this, this does mean something. And you know, they pulled that off. I was really happy for them. That was a big goal. And they were able to pull that off. With the amount of people that came for the support, what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot, I'm, but I'm not surprised that that happened. Um, I, you know, I said in some of my other interviews, I, I just wished for years and years that we could have had a team. And I said, you know, it didn't have to be the baseball team. I don't want somebody from our school to make the state tournament. I want our South Central fans and everybody involved, all the alumni, I want them to be able to experience this. You know, finally we got to do it. Um, the support from all the ex-players, ex-parents, I mean, just the whole South Central community uh, was just overwhelming, but I'm not surprised that that happened. <laughs> if you weren't a baseball coach, what would you have done instead? Well, I really have no idea. I played or coach my entire life. And people have asked me, when are you gonna quit coaching? And I said, you know, as long as it's fun, I'm gonna keep doing it. As long as I can stay healthy, I'm gonna quit doing it. And I said, you know, if I didn't do it, I don't know what in the world I would do. I don't know what I would fill all that time in with. I'm gonna find out someday, I think. I don't know when, um, but I don't have a really good answer to that question. Well, I think you, you take a lot of things from coaches that you've had in the past. You know, my high school coaches, my high school basketball coach called me after this and congratulated me, had a nice conversation with him. Um, my college coaches, both of them, one was more personality like myself, a little bit more laid back. My, one of my coaches was fiery and just crazy, which is not my personality, but I learned a lot from both of those guys. Uh, one of the guys I played for in the Clinton County Baseball League when I was a lot older. Um, I felt like our personalities matched up. I took a lot from him, um, which was, you know, really kind of put me over the edge, I think, when I got in high school. It was just a way of communicating with the kids. He had that special gift of communicating with people and aligned with me, and I felt like I took that. Um, 
the legendary coach, Coach Shirley. I, he was one of my best friends for many, many years, and watching him coach and, and some of the things that he did uh, also made a big impact on me too. Was, um, I've been doing it a long time. There would be a long list of administrators and athletic directors and you know teachers at the high school. There would be a long list of people to thank there because you see them every day. You work with them. Um, tons of ex-players, ex-parents, um, alumni like that. Um, there's a lot of older people in the community that supported us all along the way, and then they come to a lot of games. I mean, I, the list is uh, so long. I think probably, number one, I'd have to thank my wife for putting up with me. She probably can't wait until, <laughs> until this is, uh, eventually comes to an end, but she still supports me. Um, so... I think, you know, that's that's probably a, that's a big one right there. Coach, I look forward to speaking with you more in the future, and we will talk soon. Very good. Thanks for coming down, and uh, thanks for the interview.